if you look at some of the early pictures of the um, Long Range Desert route, you will see the vehicles have got the pink paint on. Pause of the canvas, then you'd fill it up with water and it would slowly weep through the, the, the pores, the, the weave of the canvas. People say that the desert, is, the desert isn't big. Depending on where you are, the desert can be from black right the way through to green. We then said, okay, so we took a sip of water, offered it to him again. He refused the water. Pink Panther for 23 years now. We are displaying here for Help for Heroes. It's a big convoy going on tomorrow and we are very, very pleased to turn up and support our service friends. I was in the service myself. I was 22 years uh, in the QGGs, Queen's Dragoon Guards, and, um, and then also I worked as a civil servant with the military. So I've got to, a lot of friends that I know need the help uh, and this is why we're here, Help for Heroes, and all of us here are gladly giving our time and the, our work through the winter to get our vehicles ready for things like this. We're going to talk about the unit made, uh, Pink Panther. The, the regiment, uh, the 22 SAS did disband uh, and wasn't reformed again till 1947. In 1947-48 the Series 1 Land Rover was produced uh, to, to simulate the Jeeps that they had during the Second World War. Um, there was only a few of them made. There is one surviving and that is down at the Dunsfold collection. So if you want to see uh, the Series 1 Pink Panther, um, that is down at Dunsfold. Uh, I was hoping it might have been up here, but it's not. So we then skip from the Series 1 into the unit made. The guys realised that when the um, 2A came out, it was the ideal vehicle for them. So they realised that they needed to modify it. Great. So they sat down and as these guys do in the regiment, they have a plan, somebody has an idea, somebody else has an idea, and they worked it together, producing this uh, unit made. Did you notice the gun carry, which carries the SLR, quite simple, easy made, bent, jerry cans bolted to the front, the spare wheel hanging from the front was a later modification. They were um, toying with the idea um, and eventually it did end up on the front. So this is quite a later modification. The early ones, the spare wheel stayed on the top. But when you're dealing with a 916 tyre, it's heavy. Too heavy for the bonnet. So someone come up with the idea, put it on the bon uh, on in front. They realised then that that also caused a, a stirring of air, which helped cool the vehicle. So they done that. They also had to modify the vehicle inside to very similar to what they did with the jeeps, with an expansion tank which went inside. Okay, here we have the GPMG. It's on the early gun mount, um, which was akin to the Bren uh, from the earlier vehicles uh, of the jeeps era. Um, very simple setup, um, but it took the, the Jimpy um, without any buffering, and there was a uh, so it did shake the vehicle a bit. We go on back through the vehicle. The idea of the jerry cans having to be thrown off uh, under air attack had now come into it being, and these were tied to the side. Um, this is, as I said, quite a later modification. Uh, 
Um, so it, it was becoming more akin to the Marshalls one. Okay, spotlight. Here, here we have the spotlight, which is good for catching rabbits. Um, Realising that we needed more uh, illumination sometimes, um, and dazzling the enemy. It's 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 they've found out that what they call white light dazzle. Um, if you've got um, enemy that's got white light shining in their eyes, uh, it causes confusion. So we had the white lights uh, fitted to assist in um, catching rabbits. <laughs> This vehicle is also fitted with the twin fuel tanks that come into place because they realised then that they needed the distance. So this vehicle is fitted with two RL Bedford fuel tanks, which was uh, readily available and easy to fit, so giving its extra range. Uh, going on back, it, it's had its extra seats put on um, because they said that although it's a three uh, for three, a crew of three, they might have to pick up uh, uh, people from other vehicles or take specialists in to drop off somewhere else. So they was get, get extra seating which sits on the top of the extra fuel tank. It is full of water, fuel and food. To, enough for a man, for three, a three man crew to live for up to six weeks out in the desert with the odd resupply from the aeroplane. And they're very nice to see them arriving because you know you're going to get your fresh bread and your mail. The longest I was out was for about four months. Um, and uh, as I said, without air supply, uh, we, we would have uh, been really uh, finding it difficult. To